once again the great moment has come for us to celebrate that historic event when Jesus instituted the Eucharist. And each year as we celebrate the Eucharist on this day, it's the stripped off version without the bells and whistles, the plain simple Eucharist. And also, it reminds us with great passion what Jesus did. On the eve of his betrayal, or on the, just before that, he institutes this. And whenever I read this, I also am reminded of how this institution has been misinterpreted or misconceived. Those of you who have seen the movie Gandhi might remember there is a scene on a crowded train. C.F. Andrews was traveling on the top of a train. Then one of the travelers, a villager, tells C.F. Andrews, who was an ordained minister of a church, Oh, you Christians eat human body. Then C.F. Andrews was taken aback. He said, what do you mean? You eat blood and body of Christ. So, recently I was reading somewhere else that Christians has been, have been accused of cannibalism. So, this institution of Holy Eucharist where we distribute the body of body and blood of Christ has been misconceived by many outsiders and by many insiders. While we wouldn't claim that we are cannibals or we are literally eating the meat from the body, physical body of Christ, but we have attributed this more like a magical thing. Instead of making it a part of our life, we think of this as something with a magical power. But we have to remember that when Christ's body is divided, distributed and consumed, that is through which we become the body. Because the church is called the body of Christ. So through this repeated participation of this sacrament, the church actually becomes, each one of us becomes that part of the bigger body of Christ. And what should that lead us to? If we become the body of Christ, it is the body of Christ that fulfill whatever Christ wishes. And again, remember, each one of us are called to be broken and divided. So each one of us has to offer ourselves as a sacrament for the redemption of the world itself. So we have to admit that church and our own spiritual life is not about our own salvation. In the modern day, in the reform movements, we always repeatedly hear the question, are you saved, are you saved, are you saved? Because it makes you think that the entire concept of Christianity is a personal salvation. It is about the redemptive activity of Christ himself. Unless and until the entire world is redeemed, we Christians are restless or should be restless. And especially on this day, as we commemorate the event in which Christ instituted the sacrament, this is a time for us to reflect on that thought, that we are called to be broken, to be fractured, so that the entire world could be redeemed. But sometimes when you read these gospel narratives, 
we wonder why Christ have to choose all these idiots as his disciples. And immediately following this passage, when Christ was very solemnly instituted the sacraments, they were worried about who is going to be the bigger one. So the end of three years of Christ's ministry seems to be useless. And still they are worried who, who will be the bigger one, who will be the greater one. Again, sometimes it reminds me of ourselves, our own churches, how quarrels erupt in our congregations. We are not worried about what Christ demands us, demands from us, or what is expected of us. We always think in terms of what we can be in the midst of all this. Again, this is in relation to the earlier part. If he is to be broken and distributed for the redemption of the world, it doesn't matter who is the greatest. Because the greatest among them, the Christ himself, was to be broken and divided. And that is the call each one of us. And many times whenever we hear this passage, we can always think about how other people didn't do it. How Tirumenis are not doing it, how Achans are not doing it, or our, how our neighbors are not doing it. But rarely we think that how we don't fit in it. How we are not doing what Christ has called us. Because we think we are the perfect. But remember, if we have an entire earth filled with people like each one of us alone, it would have been a horrible world. So this is a time not to judge others, but make an evaluation of your own life and see how we can be that real body of Christ and how we can justify our consummation of this sacrament through partaking in the body and blood of Christ. May God bless us all. Thank you. Sneha Shesha Samanila Lamora